You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high lord i lift your name on high Jesus was our example so that after you come to know him personally, not just know about him, but to know him personally, to follow the way that he set. Everything that he did, he wants us to do his works and greater. But what have we done in our desire to please him? We've looked up to some people who say they represent him, <clears throat> some leadership. And yes, it can be so beneficial for certain seasons in your life. But I want you to ask God if where you reside now under some headship is for the season that you're going into now. In other words, can they take you further or will they limit you? Because what God is showing me is that man always wants a king. And when you're a baby Christian, within you, you're excited with any kind of connection with someone who knows that he's real too. They just know that he's real too. And you like to learn, but there's so much more revelation per verse that a lot of times the first set of people that God gives you as believers or allows you to be by, to congregate with, a lot of times they will only keep serving you and reserving you their same revelation on that verse because that's where they're at. But it's really undernourishing and you're really missing out on some deeper things. God wants to give you more wisdom. He wants to train you in power. He wants to train you in <clears throat> understanding the science of miracles. God wants to train us and in, in, in introduce us to our angels. And their name is sometimes their function. And what they are to do as the co-workers in the kingdom with us. God wants to show us mysteries. God wants to take us deeper. God wants us to thirst, not just to just be saved and that's it and wait to go to heaven. There is so much more. There is so much more that if you would grow in him so much here, you'll, you should keep finding that he keeps handing you more and more and more because he's saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or wise and faithful servant. Because you have been faithful over much, or over a little bit, I'm going to give you more. That's here. If you aren't experiencing that here, that's not after you die and leave, though there are things that you can do and function in, in heaven. But how are you reaching the lost from there? You really make the biggest difference and you and you you determine your closeness to God this side of the veil <clears throat> while there's breath in your chest. You determine how close you sit to him here. Because when you go over there, you will be spiritually in the place that you left when you were here. We need to come to know the Father's voice audibly because once you hear the shepherd's voice, you don't need another to lead you 
So you may like to congregate with some, but what you'll find is that you're sitting over them in the rafters and you see through that many of them play and operate on a lower level. Jesus was the way, is the way, and is showing the way. First we come to the Father through him. Then you have to grow and, and by obedience and even by the little, the little convictions he gives you, he may pull you away and call you away. If As you are responsible with the little things that he gives you, even instruction, conviction, direction, inspiration, open doors that he shows you and you walk through, even if your knees are knocking and you're afraid, <laughs> you take those positions, those opportunities, those maybe it's times where he wants you to just do things that are so outside of your comfort zone and you will get battled with the demons for every level of your walk and for more revelation sometimes you get a thorn and sometimes for more revelation sometimes you get warfare because you entered into something new and the enemy is so afraid of you so he makes you think that you're afraid but he's projecting his feelings onto you. But if you would listen and keep going so far after you know Jesus, then you'll come to hear the Father's voice. You have to know the Father's voice for your own self. And you have to be heightened in your sensing and discernment, to be exercised in your discernment. But what have we done? We've settled in cliques and cults and circles of powerless Christians. They don't really, all of them don't really believe what they're reading. They don't all believe that Bible they hold. Anyway, I can appreciate different groups in churches, I guess, because everybody's different. You have to find a place where you fit sometimes. And unless God's doing a new thing with you, you'll never fit anywhere because you're a trailblazer. Trailblazers aren't meant to fit anywhere because they're meant to make trails. You won't fit on their path. But what God wants us to do is not play religion and manipulation games and hierarchy games, but for us to walk in the glory together, going from glory to glory to glory, means it didn't mean growing all the way till you die and go to heaven. It means realizing you're in heaven seated already in heavenly places and that you're going to grow out of that beast mindset that wants to see everything in the natural and make logic of everything. God wants you to be in a higher mind, which is the mind of Christ, and to have the joy of the Lord. I, I heard the amount of joy that you have is a clue to the power that you have. And it is true, like, it is true. Because the healing is, the healing power is in love and in joy vibrations scientifically. Scientifically, love and joy is the highest vibration scientifically. Now, that may sound new age, but it is a new age. It's kingdom age, but what God wants his people to know is that he made science. So don't be a scaredy cat. Don't be afraid of it. <clears throat> I may speak all blunt, but it's all it's all love and it's all because even love wants to show you the truth. Because if we as the body of Christ were who he wanted us to be and by just awakening to the fact that you already are him in the flesh, you are that body of Christ. You in the in the in the body of of Christ, the body of Christ is the government of God. If we knew who we are, this world would already be changed, taken over, so much of heaven manifesting on it. And if we knew to not fear fame, riches, wealth, leverage, platforms, businesses open doors, multiple streams, then we would know who we are, be empowered, have a good idea, and change the world. Because the ones in ownership can rule the land. God always wanted to give his people the land. But what I always hear when I go to congregations is they're always talking down about 
moving up. We are to be the righteous that make the people in the land rejoice. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. We are to be those people that God can entrust with more. Wise and faithful steward, now I'm going to give you more. I'm I'm really tired of hearing my people put back down into the poverty spirit mentality, which tells us that we can't have more, and if you have more, that you don't love God. But what if you love God so much that you don't want the wealth, but he wants to give it to you? What if he wants to trust you because you don't want it? Solomon, what do you want? Ask anything. Have you ever heard the audible voice of God say, ask me for anything. Say it, write it, and I'll give it to you. I've heard God tell me this over and over and over again because no bragging on me, but I've been sent through the fire. A sword has come upon my house. He said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And he's going to divide a husband from the wife and this and that. God has divided my house already and has told me to lay down what I love and let go. So I have been a single parent for really, I've really been doing it my own anyway, the whole time. For a long time, single for like 12 years or something. But what what I did was every time he convicted me or drew me away or sometimes certain people fit my life, but when I was growing in him and they weren't, but they knew him, but they were loving the mud. They didn't want wisdom and pearls. They loved the mud. So when I outgrew some people, I felt Jesus call me away and I went with my heart broken and I kept running in him. And I kept growing in him, and I thirsted for that. So if you can give up everything, houses, brother, sister, mother, I mean, you're in your family, but you're not of it. You're in their family line, but you're not really of the mindset. You're different. You don't even fit your family when you grow so much in God. You'll see through generational curses, mindsets, traditions. Tradition tradition is not bad, but if it's a hindrance to what the Holy Spirit wants you to do, then it is. For you, it's not good. Because to he who knows better and you don't do it, then it's sin. Sin is missing the mark. So if it's something that's between you and God in the way of your closeness, or the full operation of how you're supposed to be operating right now, then that's error. You have to love him more than any created thing, any created person. If you think of people as like breath-infused dust, then what they say when they pressure you and guilt trip you won't really intimidate you because you see through them. They're only atoms with a spirit that's willing to either yield to demons their flesh, their human spirit, or God's spirit. You need to start to see through people and feel and sense on another level and hear and know on another level of which operates through them. That's how you jump over different pits and traps and tricks. But if you keep listening to God, you'll you will hear the Father's voice. Sometimes if you get certain people out of your ear, get away from certain people, that's how you hear him. If you don't love him enough, you won't make the sacrifices as he shows you. I'm, I'm just seeing how so many aren't further by now. And it's because of the hierarchy system, the games that we play. We play church. And a lot of people want to be a teacher, but they don't have revelation. 
And so that sitting up under that will limit you and even put a twist on Bible verses. Though there's many revelations per verse, God shows me. And for every season of my life, I can see a different revelation on a lot of different verses because he's going to speak to me where I'm at and, and show me where to go and show me how high he's trying to take me because I want to lay everything down. If you will lay everything down, he will raise you up. He always meant to make his people ahead and not the tail. Anyway, I just think we should be farther by now. I just think we should be chewing on more revelation by now and able to get our own, just hear him on our own, not make up our own meaning to verses, but to hear him on our own. Just get out of your mind. We're, we're doing performance-based and fear-based stuff. You just need to rest in him and sit down and let him speak and let him show you. Do we question him for everything that we're told and taught? Because someone can give you truth one moment and you not know that they give you a lie another moment and they're well-meaning and they don't know. But it's because of these things we have blocks in our brain and we're hindered. But God wants to give his people revelation. He wants them to move from a whole different level. Actually move from the place that you're seated in and they're seated in heaven. So I was going to read a poem. And maybe I'll read it anyway. And then maybe I'll um, make another video with just the poem or I don't know. I'm just, she's just talking. Okay. So I'm going to try to read it. I hope I read it correctly the first time through. And, okay. I wrote this uh, March 2013. So this is new. Talking about your average Christian. Your average Christian is still technon, which means baby. They're still a baby Christian. Even for like 20 years, they'll still be a baby Christian. Every Christian should have certain experiences in God that are just, not just where you're like, well, God, God provided for me. Woo. I mean, things that are like bigger than just, those are some big things that he's waiting on him providing for you to trust and have faith. But I'm talking about when God wants to move through your hands. When God wants to do things through you, signs, wonders, miracles, when you feel a burden in the heart of God just so strong for someone when they're suffering or, you know, we should know our authority more. We should not be afraid of wealth, fame, riches, because it's what Solomon didn't want, but God gave it to him because he trusted him. Can you be that one that God trusts and would download even an invention in your mind because he trusts you or a doorway or a platform or a business or a building or organization to you? And actually, one more thing, churches need to quit manipulating the people. It is a time where they need to get creative. They need to, they need to think outside of the box. Because really, I don't, I don't like when I, when I pick up manipulation and control is on the dead churches. When they ask for money and they're dead churches, manipulation and control is what they move out of, if you can sense in the spirit. But when you go to an apostolic and prophetic house that moves by the spirit, and they may not call them apostolic and prophetic, you know, um, they may not call it that, like in their title, but when they move in the spirit and then they and they want funding, the delivery of is just different if you can pick up in the spirit. You have to be able to recognize from the door when you walk into congregations or different places or whatever, like what is working or what is moving or what's on the people. Because if you can see, then you have less chance to fall into the subtle manipulation guilt trips and tactics that the enemy does on that house you can know 
because you are his body. So you can have eyes like Christ in the body of Christ. You can have ears like Christ in the body of Christ. You can have senses like him because we have God's DNA and we are supposed to be Christ-like and we're supposed to be more like him and have more measure of his spirit like him. So if we have more measure of his spirit like him, we can be more aware of this multidimensional reality that we walk in. Then you have less chance of being tricked and hooked up with the liar, with the wrong one, having a leech stuck on your side, a manipulator, a smiling wolf, and a false shepherd. You can know. You can know. Ask God about everything, everybody, and I always say it, so I'm going to read a poem. Here we go. Your average... Uh, mindset of a believer that does not ask God to lead them by the spirit. They, they try to figure everything in their brain and they think they're discerning, but they're using their brain. D real discernment, like on a deeper level is by the spirit. So anyway, they keep each other accountable to stay conformed in their cults and cliques about as blinded as the norm in need of revelation but instead religious spirit's inspiration seems right, but subtly twisted. So then considered saved, but is as Proverbs describes, wicked. Meaning well, but worshiping what they know not. Worshiping a flesh king with subtle controls, usually what they got. Moved by pressure and guilt trips or a hierarchy game overhead. Trapping you to be as limited as them when Holy Ghost never said or led. Can you see what's dead? His presence isn't on the spot. Devil should have been spotted and caught. But to the blind, not. For perception deeper than carnal mind is what enemy fought. Demon manifestation, gleaming, peeking in face and eyes. You'll know the ones without rest and wine by the mask seriousness disguise trained set flesh perceptions per bible verse false and half truths minds rehearse missed his meaning deeper yet and still they are filled on fake manna of which will have them killed our aging can be reversing as we are a window having heaven rehearsing. Its desires turn up your fire, electricity surging in your bones and you living from heaven as your home, a reigning sun's throne. If one can't die down and raise up, think and live like you're from another nation. So you aren't as these who are leaving because they believe in to reside in lower vibration in need of heaven's manifestation. Is only what's within them, if only what's within them could be let free, they would find healing and everlasting life here and no more beast mind be. They thought they were free, up under manipulation, can't see subtle tricky manifestations upon your average congregations. Unawares dancing with the demons and some still without him as the heathen, Oh, shoot, that may not be so cute. But with a demon I see through, I won't dispute. They thought they were free, but in chains fought the truth, even as a puppet on a string. Unaware he did the work, even made us clean, and to the wise and faithful riches he'd like to bring. If only these demons could keep his own from being awakened kings and queens, because then more glory bring. New song sing, changed body, light being, means full salvation manifestation in Jesus the Christ. It's the time of the party and wine for life. We are to be that five wise virgins, his awakened, powerful wife.
My name is Anna Clark. You can find me on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Apostle Anna Clark. It's spelled A-N-N-A-C-L-A-R-K. There should be a link on my YouTube page. My YouTube page is youtube.com slash one green eye. That's all one word. Spell out one green eye. O-N-E-G-R-E-E-N-E-Y-E. And you can friend me on Facebook, send prayer requests. If you have a question, if you have some issue or something that is that you're really under right now, some kind of warfare, if you're wondering about someone that you're dating, if you're wondering about somebody you're married to, if you're wondering about some people around you, you can type a little of a situation or you can just ask me a question or you could just ask me to pray for you. But God may tell me a message for you. Because he cares and he's still speaking in this day. And he has something specific for you. He wants to tell you things so that you can be all that, those desires that he put in your heart, those good desires, he wants them to come true. He said it there. So is something blocking those things from coming true? I can tell you. If he tells me and he tells me to say it, then I will say it. If it's a hard thing to say, I'll say it. If it's, if I'll, I will rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep, and I will be that person as an instrument to him if he wants me to share something with you. So don't be afraid to inbox or anything like that. And on the time that I'm, that he tells me to do whatever, then I will do that, and I will let you know, and I'll connect with you and make time for you. So. Um, my name is Anna Clark. Again, go to facebook.com um, slash Apostle Anna Clark, and you should see a link. If you don't see a link, click this video, and it should take you back to my YouTube page, and um, you'll find me somehow. <laughs> All right. So thank you for listening, and hopefully I'll be back soon sharing more and maybe even reading some some writings that I found online that I really want to share from this one ministry. And it's especially for those that are remnant and there's people that are awakening more and um, they're starting to see through and God's confirming stuff that they need to move from some places because they don't fit anymore, because they can't take you higher, because they can't take you to your next level. So I'm I, I want to... Free people to be who he sent them to be. I want to free people to come to their next level and to cut off soul ties, leeches, or anything that's hindering them. Even even help their mind to be free because sometimes the enemy puts lies in your mind and it comes in your voice and you think that it's you, but it's really the enemy. And you accepted it as part of your personality, but it's really not him. And that's why you can't function or do some performance in a certain way because you you think something that the enemy put in you is you, and it's not. And I can help you to identify those different things and cut you free from it in Jesus' name because all the power is in his name and in his blood, and it really works. Jesus works. If you didn't know, try him. So thank you for listening. My name is Anna Clark, and that's all for now.